Got coffee, got water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, let's try. Welcome to the podcast. Take three. This technical difficulties is going to be the death of me. Bye. Yep. <sighs> That's because I know this episode is going to be amazing and I'm going to make this fucking happen. So Wait. kicking it with Cardolas podcast going down again with the legendary Graham, who's the founder and creator of Pillars of Growth and is a mind, body, spirit coach. Yes! The sword! <laughs> That's how you know it's going to be good this time, baby. And uh, oh, after God. this, I will be marching my butt directly to prep cold-pressed juices to get Roots number three, which I had yesterday. It was fire, and it had a nice kick of ginger. I don't know about you, but when it comes to juice, I like ginger and slash mm. turmeric. Well, wow, turmeric is life for all the reasons. Anyways, however, so those of you who are listening and not watching, Graham just pulled out a sword. <laughs> Legit. Actually, and it's it's a but you can see it's actually busted because we fought with it. <laughs> we larped with it, and the, and the actual hilt of the sword is broken off. That's amazing. Yep. So amazing. now it looks more like a gladiator sword now than it does a claymore, like it That's- was at one point. That's at <laughs> height of prowess. You- <laughs> Oh my god. See, I don't even need to introduce you. You're the <laughs> legend that comes onto the podcast and YouTube show and fucking wields the sword on your coaching calls. Yeah, yeah, we, we are. Need I out say here. more? Need I say more? <laughs> but I will, though, as we get started, because we've had technical difficulties twice. Third time's gonna be a charm. Um, you are, like I said before, definitely one of the most influential and has had the most impact um, of a coach and mentor that I've ever worked with in the last couple of years who's made the significant difference in my life, not only um, personal development wise, but business wise as well. And we are going to dive into the whole mind, body, spirit coach, which I feel is one of the biggest things that's lacking in the coaching space. Very few people are doing it and having worked with as many people as I have, while I've always learned something, um, this has been profoundly different. And I truly believe is what the coaching space is missing and is needed. And that you're, you are making huge, massive steps to change the coaching space we are we are yes we are making making move making taking massive action yep. wielding Absolutely. the swords and you know just <laughs> all those things kicking kicking ass dude just kicking ass so why well, i wanted to talk to you about all sorts of things mind body spirit alignment coaching what you're seeing what you're um what you're not seeing is probably more important um mm. how does a person such as yourself, knowing I know a little bit of your background and a little bit of your story, the quote unquote average person, an ordinary person, have this realization that this is your path, this is your journey, this is where you need to be. Tell me about that. Question, right? So uh, as I was saying earlier, uh, it really all started um, through my misunderstanding of myself and misrepresentation of myself right and that goes back to a time growing up and like i said earlier literally word for word being a fellow enfj you're aware that our what we like to do is please people we want people to like us we like to be liked we like to be a part of the conversation we like to be a part of the event we don't like fomo at all we don't like messing out because we we know we can have so much fun and like fun's fun and like we love fun and like you know se child needs to have that experience and give that experience and i think growing up i was you know, I was like the runt of the group. I was like the shorter, chubbier little kid. And uh, although I was like really good in some areas and I would like excel in some areas, especially for example, swimming, it was a sport that I, I, sw- I swam since I was you know, like three years old. I found myself oftentimes trying to either come down or move towards the frequency and vibration of people in my friends group to try and show them that I was cool to, to prove to them that I was like one of the guys, to, you know, constantly putting myself out there to be someone I'm not. And it wasn't until I went to college that I started to learn how to differentiate myself a little bit um, by earning money. I, I found that earning money separated myself from other people and gave me a different avenue, right? I was a three sport athlete in, in uh, high school and going into college, I wanted to play um, football my mom convinced me to go to Temple University in Philadelphia, which was, you know, I grew up in the suburbs of Philadelphia, so not far. Um, and she said that it would, she kind of convinced me that I, if I'm going to play, I may as well try and play at a bigger school and get a better education and go into a smaller school and just playing football, right? And, you know, now that I think back on it, I truly did love football. 
But I think there was a huge portion of it that felt like, you know, egotistically playing football meant I was cool. And the better I was at football, the cooler I would be. And the cooler I would be, the more stuff I'd get. The, I would attract the girls. I would, you know, I would be the leader that I wanted to be, right? I, I was constantly, um, I was constantly visualizing what I wanted or thought I wanted instead of just being, right? And I always talk about this. It's been like the biggest shift is just being. Like instead of focusing so much on what you don't have right now and like standing next to the escalator and like, if I just go like this long enough, I'll definitely get up there. Like just walk onto the escalator and walk up the escalator by being that. And you'll eventually elevate yourself to the top. And so when I went to college and I quickly found myself in a place where I'd never been before. Uh, I only had a couple friends that came with me from high school and they were my closest friends. So all we did was rip on each other. You know, as much of friends we were, we really bonded through the fact that we just didn't have anyone else to be around us. So though I do think we have things in common and, and I'm friends with a lot of those guys still today, I don't necessarily believe that they understood me on the deepest level. And I don't necessarily believe I could have been fully myself and they would have accepted that. And also I wasn't. And I ended up in a place where I didn't really have a lot of friends. And that was the first time in my life that I wasn't, I didn't know everyone. And like, you know, as an ENFJ, like the best thing ever is when you walk into the coffee shop and you already know the barista and you're just like, what's up? Like we out here and they already got your drink. And like that, like familiarity is just like such a fun experience. And so it was the first time in my life that I went somewhere and, you know, being a three sport athlete, what I found in, in high school was that playing sports, all these different sports, I would meet the older kids and all their friends and the younger kids and all their friends. And so I had a huge network. Like I knew so many people and it was, it was fun. Like I enjoyed that. Right went to college, I didn't have that. So I, I started to kind of get a little introverted. And that was a really tough time for me because I never really spent that time with myself to actually familiarize uh, with who I was. And so it was kind of scary looking under the hood being like, you know, I, I don't know what I want to do. I don't really know who I am. And I'm like hypercritical of all these things. And my ego is just in my ear all day long about you're not doing this enough. You're not doing that enough. You're never going to have this. You're never going to have that. You're not doing this. People don't recognize you. Respect all this stuff to the point where, you know, now you smoke some weed and you're more introverted and you just beat yourself up. And it wasn't until I, I started to earn some money and started a little business um, in my pursuit of playing division one football and walking onto the team that I started to actually build some confidence of my own and differentiate myself a little bit from that person that I was. The, uh, the issue was that I differentiated it on the, on the backs of illegal activity versus something honest and true, right? I, I shouldn't even say that. I was balancing both, right? But I was never fully in on, on just being honest and true to myself. And it was in that process that I, I really took the drug dealing and, and eventually built a drug addiction um, to stimulants, to, to marijuana especially, to alcohol, to all kinds of different substances. I, you know, I turned to substances to differentiate myself because I was too afraid to go inward and actually deal with myself, right? And face myself and face my insecurities, my doubts, the beliefs that I had created about myself, the truth of who I was, the things that I really wanted versus what I thought I wanted, right? Mm -hmm. And um, through that process, I got further and further away from who I was. And I talked about it earlier. I eventually convinced myself that, you know, as I manipulated myself into believing this is what I wanted or this is the person I needed to be so I could prove to this person that I was cool or prove to that person that I was better or prove to everyone else that I could earn all this money, et cetera, right? And moving through that place and learning to manipulate myself, it wasn't long before I was manipulating others and doing it at a, at a high level often and moving into that place and, and getting further and further away from who I was and ended up coming to a point where I, you know, I was ready to really commit to that full time and go all in with it and let that be the thing that I did and either end up, you know, Pablo Escobar style or in jail, right? One mm -hmm. or the other and put myself in position just to lose really. Cause it's a lose, lose. You lose if you're Pablo Escobar because you, you have a wake of destruction and you lose if you go to jail because who wants to go to jail and, and be in a cage? Like that's definitely not how I envisioned my life. Right. So it wasn't really until I had gotten really out of hand and to the point where I was really going to have no return that, you know, the, the moment of truth, if you will, sort of struck me, which was that my dad got sick with cancer. And, you know, I was talking about this with, with Allie the other day. And uh, I was telling her that during that time, I was, I was like so committed to going above and beyond and making that my career. And like the only thing that really could, 
get me out of that mode because you know, I'm making thousands of dollars a week as like a 19 year old. Like when you do that and you have like other businesses and you're already like starting new ones, like it's hard to like get out of that flow because you get so obsessed with it because you think that that's going to be the thing that differentiates yourself and proves to you that you're actually worth it, that you're actually validated. Right. Cause I couldn't, I couldn't find the internal validation. So the external validation of, okay, someone just gave me 500 bucks. Yes. I'm doing things right. Someone just like signed up for my landscaping services. Yes. I'm doing something right. Someone just bought knives from me. Yes, I'm doing something right. I just graduated. I just passed this class with a C. Okay, I'm doing this thing, right? Versus like, no, no, no. Like, this is true to me. This is integrity to me. I'm doing it for me. I'm doing it because I believe in it, right? And I didn't have that experience. And so I, I, I recognized that I was staring in the face of, of like the arch rival of myself, right? The person that I really wasn't, that I was pretending to be, that I had said that I would always defend, right? And, and not, and not uh, allow to take over who I was and start to manipulate those around me and create that false sense of identity. When my dad got sick, it really woke me up to that because I just knew that I couldn't, I knew that he was going to die. And I knew that I couldn't live knowing that he was going to look down at the destruction that I was causing. I just couldn't do it. I was like, that's not me. I can't, I can't live that way. I don't want to live that way. And I want to be a better person for myself, for my family, for this world. And, um, when he got sick, it really woke me up and it put me in a position where I wanted to, to be better, do better. And so in the, in the you know, last few months of his life, I decided that I, I, I wanted to sell my landscaping business. I had a month where I moved home from my drug dealing and, and, and I stopped with the drugs. And uh, I had a month where literally all I did was read Game of Thrones and go to the gym. And it was in that month that I started to find myself again and started to connect with, and now you have a bunch of fiction behind you. I started to reconnect with myself, right? I always had a really creative, imaginative mind, magic and dragons and all that stuff's always been like interesting to me and exciting and riveting. And, and so I started to connect with that version of myself again, the child that I had lost touch with. In the process of that, I started to dream. I started to think bigger. I started to say, you know, like, dude, you've been like in fitness your whole life. You've always been an athlete. Like, why not try something a little outside the box? You're young. Why not try to make a career out of this fitness thing? You have a year and a half left of school. You are really behind in school, but you, you know, you saved a bunch of money. So, I mean, like you can float yourself for the rest of this and, and give it a shot. So, uh, you know, about a month before my dad died, I committed to doing a bodybuilding show, a men's physique show, um, nine months later. And that was the first time in my life that I ever actually set a goal for me, one that I knew I really wanted to do because I knew it would push me out of my comfort zone. And I dedicated myself for the nine months and I was you know, going to the gym multiple times a day. I was the first time I ever really took dieting extremely seriously. I tried and tested all kinds of different scientific ways of manipulating my calories and my macros um, and manipulating. I, I did take some drugs for that uh, steroid wise, just a little bit. But I mean, I even went so far as to scientifically figure out what I needed to take in order to get to where I wanted to go. And I prepared for the whole show myself. And I showed up on stage and it was the best I've ever looked to this day, I still believe. And it was a really, really great experience for me because it was the first time in my life that I set something that I wanted to do and I actually followed through. Right? I had set a billion goals in my life, but I never actually followed through. And so for nine months, all I did was that I passed um, college with a 2.3 GPA, which was like one of the hardest things I ever did. I'm not really the best student. Uh, I shouldn't say that. I'm a, I think I'm a great student when it's interesting and exciting and something I want to learn about, but when it's boring and it's finance and, and the teacher isn't into it and excited, how can I be excited if the teacher isn't excited? I mean, what the heck? That's setting the tone for like, okay, here we go again. It's like, okay, there's no excitement. So I passed and then something really interesting happened to me at the end of the prep. Um, and when I got off stage, I had this realization that something really different had shifted in me, right? It wasn't just fitness. I didn't just get abs. I didn't just get really, really lean. Like mentally, I expanded my mind during that time. I learned new things. I applied myself and I applied those things and they made the changes and it worked. So I discovered and learned and experienced something new. And on a deeper level, something that I set out to do that I knew was going to fulfill me started to actually fulfill me and I saw what it did and I saw how all my friends looked up to me for the first time in my life like for real and we're like dude like we're like really excited for you like this is a good direction that you're going in and I realized then that it was more than just fitness right there was a mind body spirit transformation and so the seed was planted then I didn't really I wasn't fully aware of it but it was planted 
And it was through that process that I felt, you know, I feel like I see where the trends in, in fitness are going. I see that there's these new, this new version of coaching, this online coaching is, is coming into fruition. And this is back when like the only people that were doing it were like the top influencers. Yeah. So, this was a few years ago. Like yeah, for, 2016. Yeah. So before, 2016, this was, yeah. you know, oh, yeah. when, this was mainstream way before sliding in the DMS was a, was culture. Like this was like, like fresh. Like, I mean, I, could, I couldn't tell you back then the response from DMS, like no one, no one was like, creeping on people like it was it was much more i don't know if it was more genuine but people weren't expecting it so it was it was a really great way for for me to connect with other people and as soon as i i decided that i wanted to be a fitness coach i started promoting myself i started telling people about what i was doing i started documenting like a like a freak and i you can look back and see all the shit i was doing is insane uh, such a different approach now of course but i didn't you don't know what you don't know mm -hmm. so that was the that was the thing that started me as a fitness coach and then by the end of the year i had had the realization that okay like you know i it's it, it's like that sometimes i think we all experience this from time to time like you know you're getting warm on something like big but you're like it's like almost but like not fully like what am i missing what is this like what's the answer you know what i mean mm -hmm. and so i just it's something was just like you know, I had fitness clients and it was going great, but I was like, there's something more and I don't know what it is. And then it came to me one day. I was, uh, I was like in my, my, I was at my old house in the office it was the afternoon, I think like in the three o'clock hour. And, uh, the, the, it was like fall. It was a warm day and the leaves were like flowing in the wind. I remember it pretty vividly. And, uh, I just had this like moment of clarity and I was just like, mind body spirit and i was just like pillars of growth mind body spirit and it just like struck me like a bolt of lightning and i was like that's it like that's what this is i didn't know what that meant i just knew that's what it was right like a lot of great ideas you don't really know what it is you're just like i just know it's definitely something this is yeah. something and so i immediately went online and i looked at it and no one had the url and i was like this is something so i got it that day and i didn't know what i was doing i had no idea about any of the you know, tech stuff we're in the same boat. Like that's something that I have to really apply myself to. Not that I can't do it. I just think, you know, we think that we're not as good as it is. We really are. So we downplay it and then we make it harder on ourselves because we don't, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I did it and the seed was planted in me. I still was kind of insecure about like telling people like, this is what it is. People would ask me, they'd be like, so what exactly is this? I, I would be like, oh, you know, and I would like kind of fumble over my words because I didn't at the time understand the vision, mission and values of the company. I didn't really get what exactly was happening, but I knew it was something. And so in the fall of 2016, that's when the idea struck me. And in the spring of 2017, that's when I started asking people to join. I founded the company later in 2017, July. And um, since then I've gone on to do a lot of different types of coaching that were, I would say like subversions of what I'm doing now, what we have done mm -hmm. uh, and what you, a version of what you are doing now too. And uh, it's been a real journey, but, that is the story of how Pillars of Growth came to be and how the fitness coaching had shifted into a much more holistic approach, approach to the mind, body, and spirit component where we really work to shift our energy, we open and expand our minds, and we really align ourselves spiritually so that we can pretty much do anything we want. <laughs> Fuck Basically. yes. Basically that, that right? <laughs> yeah. Just no big deal. Just Yeah, yeah, yeah dude. Just, yeah, basically, just basically that. <laughs> just, just, yeah. so, so you said like a whole bunch of things that I, I want to um, ask you to talk about. And um, one of them being you mentioned at the very beginning of your journey of just really buying into this fake identity of yourself and portraying that to the world and not knowing. And, you know, in your experience and my own coaching experience, I see this all the time. I'm sure you've seen it even more, especially as a coach who's trying to lead how easy it is to fall into the mold of somebody else's opinion of how you're supposed to be. Yeah, <laughs> how do you feel about that? What are your thoughts on that? Of people living in, in the wrong identity or coaches yeah. thinking they need to do something because they hear it or something like that. Both. Right. So I think that it's, I think that it's just, it's, I think it, when you think about, I think this is the thing. I think everyone, I don't think that. This is so fun. I love talk. I love speaking because you, know, you learn so much about yourself. And you really listen to what you're saying. Everyone does this, and everyone does that. What kind of generalizations is that, right? Um, I I think that when we look at things practically, 
things become more clear and humans have a have this notion that it's too complex for me to think about right and that's because i i'm not gonna lie i won't sugarcoat it we don't think a lot humans do not think that much these days like i post an article in our group this morning about how these guys created the duomo the uh, huge cathedral in florence italy and like the way they built that is like those guys were fucking thinking about how they could do this without any modern technology they built this freaking huge structure it took them a hundred some years to do it like yeah. what right we're not even getting into all that talk about dedication and commitment I'm never even going to see this thing get built, but I'm going to build it or design mm-hmm. it. Whole another conversation. But uh, as far as humans and not thinking, when, when we start to think about why we act a certain way or why we are a certain way, things become much more simple when we can take ourselves out of the equation, remove the ego and actually look at it objectively. Like when we're young, we, especially in that like one to seven age range, we're in that uh, brainwave pattern of theta, which is literally the recording and downloading phase which means that everything people say to you, you just download. You don't sift through to see if it's true or false. You just download it. So if someone's literally feeding you lies, you will believe lies for six, seven years. They'll be programmed in your subconscious. And now you need to work your whole life to unlearn them and relearn them. So what does that mean? It means that most of us, when we grow up, are told things at times or are subjected to things at times that may or may not be true for us. Thus, we feel like we need to be someone based on someone else's opinions of what they want us to do for example let's say i'm a five-year-old kid and my, my parents came to this country and they're they were they were immigrants and they believe this is a common thing that we see right they believe that you need to either be a doctor or a lawyer so they tell you, you have to be a doctor or a lawyer so guess what you grow up thinking you have to be a doctor or a lawyer that's the only way you're ever going to be successful and guess what you find out 10 years old you really want to be an artist and you're like i don't want to be a doctor or a lawyer but i can't disobey my parents and so yeah. slowly but surely your spirit is grinded down into mush as the art becomes further and further away and the reality of living in a prison, a hell of having to be a lawyer or a doctor your whole life becomes your truth. Thus that, 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 you know, unconscious uh, fear, or I shouldn't say that unconscious anger and resentment towards them now will manifest itself. Let's say, for example, in you feeling like you need to externally uh, validate yourself with drugs or you need to externally validate yourself with, any type of over the top experience to hide the pain that you're feeling that you really wanted to be an artist this whole time. Right. Mm -hmm. And so the things that people say to us when we're younger, when we're super young, especially they really carry over anything that we go through. That's really heavy traumas, et cetera. They really carry over and they end up being our limiting beliefs, our self doubts, our fears, our insecurities, uh, our unconscious issues, the things that we don't deal with. And I think that if we look at it practically, we can at least understand why it happened. And if we can understand why, then we can start to work to overcome it. But I think that so many of us get caught in, well, fuck this and fuck that person for doing this. And that's like, I see that a lot. And, you know, I get it. And I feel like there was a time where I had that too, like revenge is the greatest success. But in the end, you still are hurt too, because now you have this chip on your shoulder that you can never let go of, right? You can't ever stop and be still and calm. And you made the comment earlier, like, are you frozen? Oh, no, I'm just... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I'm just sitting here, right? Because it's something that you just over time learn. Like that, that's the real, that, that's where you will find what you're looking for, right? We are all looking for that happiness and that inner peace. And you find it in stillness and awareness in the moment. And so if we can move past that chip on your shoulder and move towards the understanding and acceptance of, I understand mom and dad, why you, why you felt like I needed to be a doctor in the world. I get that. I forgive you for that. It's not your fault because you felt like that was all you could do when you got here and you wanted me to have the best life. That was your version of showing me love. It wasn't what I needed, but it was what you showed me. And it's my job and responsibility to accept that and then turn that negative energy that I would have towards you into something productive, to teach someone else that you don't have to do this, to overcome it myself and unlearn all the things that I learned in that regard and relearn what it is that I wanted to Pick up art again, start from the beginning and get in touch back with that, that, that dream or that, that inspiration, that, that influence that really, really spoke to you on the deepest levels. Mm-hmm. And I think that if we can become practically aware of it, right, and the key word is practical because it really, it really is quite simple when you sit down with someone, you know, you sit down with someone, you talk to them, very quickly, they, they're revealing to you what it is that's holding them back, what, it, what their parents said to you, they'll tell you right away, they're not afraid to tell you. Well, and that's right? the second thing, you know, you say practical, but awareness. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's something I talk about heavily in my own coaching in terms of anything is as awareness where lack because it is lack of awareness. So it's not only, you know, practicality, but awareness too. That's the second part of the story. Boom. Michelle's got it. So <laughs> the awareness towards that, of course, right? 
is going to put you in position to feel like you can start to overcome this thing. And right. And that's where obviously coaches are really effective because they can sift through all the bullshit and just show you the truth. Right. It's almost like coaching is almost like I already always talk about excavating. Right. Because that's really what I think it is. But it's also like it's kind of like um, the story of uh, a, uh, what's it called? a Christmas carol. The spirits visit Ebenezer Scrooge and they pull him up to a bird's eye view yeah. and they show him his life in different ways and perspectives. And that changes him overnight. And it's kind of what coaches do. They kind of show up in your life. They ask you some questions. You get opened up. And then your awareness shifts. You start to see how you're impacting other people, right? You start to see how you're impacting yourself, right? Which mm-hmm. I think is the part that really blows people's minds. It's like, wow, that anger and resentment I have towards that person is really just me being angry and resentful of myself for not doing something about it, right? Thus, I'm living in this frequency of anger and resentment. How am I supposed to be happy if I'm always angry and resentful, right? Well, and and to lead into that, I think, you know, being in the coaching space and having been in multiple programs and seeing other coaches being in multiple programs is that, and you and I talk about this quite often is that there's a business coach who is a marketer and they're teaching business strategies. And then there's coaches who are touching based onto the personal development side, which for me has been of all the programs that I've done, it's always been a struggle. Like I, I get that tactic. I get that tactic. I get that yeah, tactic. Yeah. And there's this huge part that you're talking about of that awareness and getting in tune with yourself and thus the whole mind, body, spirit. And what's your vision? To awaken the infinite potential within people changing the world by first changing ourselves. That themselves changing themselves. And I think it's, it's starting to shift a little bit with some of the, the big high mentors that are up there and they are starting to talk about more personal development but it's the, well, you and I've talked about this a lot is it's the order. And I need to give a perfect analogy because you're going to love this. It's like, um, it's like someone gives you the best bow and arrow in the land, but if you're not strong enough to pull the bow and arrow, you can't shoot it. Mm-hmm. Right. You have, you cannot grow professionally until you grow personally. And anyone that stops growing professionally in their work is because they are receding personally. It's literally that simple. Like it actually is that simple. Thus, The personal development is more important than professional, especially for people who are just starting, which is what I'm seeing the most is like the craziest thing is like, people are like, yo, carry this giant sledgehammer and just start whacking people with it. And the people are like, (laughs) they're like a foot tall and a hundred pounds and they're like toppled over and they're like, this isn't working. It's like, dude, you see what you're doing? This makes no sense. And like, there's no judgment. It just doesn't make any sense. Like Mm -hmm. it makes no sense. When you get the strength, then the hammer hits 10 times harder. When you get the strength, you can pull the ball away back. It goes all the way to the next generation, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Like, it's that. <laughs> well, you know, it, you, it sounds simple in theory, right? Yeah, it's like, right, yes, course. it's that. But, you know, you <laughs> having talked to many coaches who are doing similar things that I am, you know, running mindset programs or full life programs or fitness, nutrition, you know, being a coach. You and I both have unicorn programs. <laughs> such as myself um but you and i talk about this a lot that that's the missing component and the more and more coaches that you are talking to and you and i both resonate that coaching is a privilege it is a you know it is an honor it is a gift it is something that we both take very seriously um because these are people's lives whereas um both of us have seen it's the money it's you know i need a mentor to make ten thousand dollars you know and i've said um and many times to other coaches where I've been helping them is that people are not transactions. And so what are you seeing in the coaching space right now? Um, And I could talk for hours about how you're different, but I'll let you sum it up for us. (laughs) Well, I think uh, a couple of things, right? I think that, first of all, I know why I'm doing it. So I know where I'm going like fully unequipped. I know exactly the trail I'm going and there's no deviations in the trail, right? I shouldn't say that there are going to be uh, peaks and valleys and like obstructions in the trail, but I know the destination and I know the direction I'm heading is on point. And I think a lot of people don't. And so they, they hide, um, this is your next $10,000 a month. Uh, and that really means like, I don't know where I'm going, but this sounds good. This is what society says is good. So we'll just go there, right? There's no thesis, right? When you ask them, if they, if they can't articulate their vision in a couple sentences, they don't know what they're doing or why they're, I should say this, they don't know why they're doing it, which is, mm-hmm really important because if you're going to sail across the sea to try and find the new world, you should probably know why you're doing it. Otherwise it's going to be hard for people to get on board. And if you do, they're going to mutiny your ass at some point because you're not going to get them where they want to go. 
And so I think like having that and having that concrete vision of where you want to go provides you with the faith needed for other people to be like, okay, I want to come on your voyage. Let's do this. Yeah. I believe in you. Thus, they end up, they, what they're saying is, I believe in myself. I know that we can do this, right? And it always starts as a we, and it always is. It's always a team thing. I'm the first person to tell you that. Leaders and the Legends isn't anything without you, without the other women and other men that are a part of it. Pillars of Growth isn't anything without us. It's an entity. It's, it's a we. It's a community. It's an organization. It's an organism, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that what I'm seeing in the space is just people not really knowing why they're doing what they're doing and just sort of meandering through things because they saw someone before them do it a certain way but not asking themselves the questions of like, why am I doing this? Because they're, because, and this is the thing, like the higher you get up in those ranks, the harder it is to ask that question faster, right? You're like, Ooh, I'm like killing it right now financially. And my business is growing like exponentially. Do I really want to ask myself the question of why I'm doing this and where I really want to go with this? Yeah. I don't want to and, do that. I'm and, do you, and do you think there's levels to that? I'm levels doing of this what? of why I'm doing this because the surface level answer that we tell ourselves versus the real reason that's connected to our heart as to why we're doing it i think that we i think that the further we go into the journey the more obvious it becomes mm -hmm. right it's sort of like it's sort of like you you see when you drop a stone in, in the water you it, you see it get murky in the river and the further you go in the direction the more clear it becomes until it's completely still and the reflection of course back is back here right mm -hmm. it's, i think it's like that i think when for example i'll use myself as an example when i first started like i knew like yes like this is it mind body spirit is it like those are the ways you can grow when you combine mind body and spirit and elevate your frequency and vibration you expand your consciousness you are attracting and you are the comp you are the compass and the magnet when you are the compass and the magnet you are attracting awesomeness to you and the things you want and you're also guiding yourself and others to where you want to go so like that's fucking awesome like you can create something with that right and the more stuff that we create for each other, the happier this world will be because we're all contributing and we all have stake in the game and we're all expressing ourselves in the truest way. So I think I didn't get that at first. If you would have asked me that three years ago, I'd been like, oh, blah, blah, blah. like, you know, <laughs> put on a bunch of fucking <laughs> random shit yeah. that like kind of made sense and sounded good because I was, had a lot of conviction, but like couldn't, it couldn't really articulate it. And I think, I think some of us, I think, I think I should restate. Some of us, our ego, are listening to our ego and like, this is what my ego wants. This is what yeah. Graham really is interested in versus like, this is what my divine spirit is like, yo, this is what needs to be. This is what you can do to serve. This is what will fulfill you more than anything you'll ever do in your entire life. Difference, right? And I think mm -hmm. it's once you can connect with this and let go of this, you can, it's never going to go away fully. The ego is part of you. Like, how else would you be able to know that I'm Graham? Like, Graham is a, a place in space and time. Like, okay, I'm here today. I'm in California. You know what I mean? We're at 9, at 9 a.m. Graham's going to show up. Like, we need to know how to communicate mm -hmm. that way. But if we can kind of relinquish some control from the ego and start to, to give the energy to that divineness within us that's, that's moving us forward towards something really meaningful, I think then that the water analogy becomes really practical because then the more time you spend in this area, the more obvious things become over time. Thus, you'll be able to articulate it. You'll be able to talk about it. You'll be able to share it. And there'll be more understanding with less words, which is always the move, right? Mm. Just being. It's hugely important. How, I guess my question to you is how important and how powerful is that essence of being in your spiritual, being in your divine, connecting the mind and body and spirit together, especially, you know, as being a coach or just people in general too, being trapped in a society where we're always busy, we're always doing, and I suffered from this myself, which Again, you know, the thing that I said I would never do ended up being some of the most powerful work that I've ever done, um, oh, yeah. you know, of, of just meditation mm -hmm. and, and being still and slowing down and connecting with that. Beautiful. Um, so the, what was the question? I, I got how, too excited. How important, <laughs> <laughs> so you, know, you just touched on how important that is and um, how you can get that clarity and know and feel in your heart. Right. What you how important is it? To, yeah, how important is it? And how powerful is that? Oh, it's the most powerful. It's in all of us and it's always been and it always will be, right? It's what constitutes this existence, that energy um, that we all feel when we, and oh man, I, I have to just speak about this one experience I had because it was really profound. I was really fucking high at a wedding back in the day, like really high. Like I'd smoked some uh, oil. Like I was like, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm looking around I'm like, I hope, I hope no one's looking at me. Right. 
<laughs> and I experienced something I've never seen before. I witnessed what love looked like vibrationally. And it was really, really profound. I was standing there and um, the groom and the mother of the groom were dancing. And I watched as the love that they had for one another like started to erupt in tears for them. And then I watched a wave of it go across the room. And I swear to fucking God, everyone at the same time, one by one, tears. I was like, whoa, holy shit, that was crazy. I just watched love as a wave just go <laughs> over all these. <laughs> so anyway, like moral of the story that energy, that love that we all have within us, when we can get in touch with that and we can detach a little bit from our ego, what it allows us to do is get in touch with what we really know we need to do and need to serve this world with. What we really want to at a deeper spiritual level, the thing that aligns us, that makes us feel like every single day we are doing something of value to ourselves and of the world, something that excites us and inspires us, inspires that creativity, right? And what makes us want to learn more, it makes us want to be more meaningful in every single circumstance, in every situation. Right? And you know you're getting closer when you find yourself more present than not, right? That's how you know you're starting to bark up the right tree because naturally you're so in tune with what's happening around you, you feel like this is exactly where you need to be at all times. And when you always feel like you're where you need to be, you're never wondering like, what can I do? What can I have done to yesterday? Or what am I going to do next weekend? Or wow, that thing I did three weeks ago was so much more fun than this, right? You're, you get out of that way of thinking and being anxious about the future or the past. And you start to just be present and, and at peace with yourself because you know you're on that journey. And I think this is the hardest part for coaches. And I think there's two reasons why. One, I think that a lot of coaches don't know why they're coaches. So not knowing why you're doing it, like, joining coaching because you're like, oh, it's a good way to make money. Like, that's not really a great idea because then you're going to focus only on the money and well, no business is built on that. So not going to work. Right. And, um, the other thing I think is that I lost my train of thought a little bit. So that just happened. That, <laughs> that happens. What was I saying? Two, th two things you see in the coaching space when they're talking about alignment and connecting with their spiritual and, and their inner child and don't start a business because of money. <laughs> right. Well, basically that, I don't remember what happened. It'll come back to me. But like, I think that when we can start to connect with that on a deeper level and understand why we're doing what we're doing. Oh, and this is what I was going to say. Start to real because once you get to that place, what you realize is that, okay, I deeply care about this thing, but if I want to preserve the integrity of this thing, I'm going to have to slow down mm. because I'm not ready to run that fast. Because if I run that fast, I'm doing some, I'm cutting corners somewhere. I'm not being honest with myself. If I'm constantly posting, if I'm literally saying this, I only have three more slots to my coaching, but you would take five. You are fucking lying. Yeah. You're lying. Sense. You're just lying. Like yeah. I get that people do it and it works, but you're lying. There's no integrity there. You would yeah. take five and I respect you would take five. I would take five. Like yep. working with five people is great, but to lie to people, to get them to do what you want is manipulation. Yes. And Which is, have, I've always been like, I can't fucking do it. And I see people post it and I'm like, I know you're taking more. And, and here's the thing. I am guilty of this. Yep. I am guilty of this in the past because I was unaware that that was because I shouldn't say this. I was unaware of my values. I didn't know what I valued. I didn't know integrity was that important to me. I didn't realize that this business for the next hundred years is going to be built on the integrity. Do the right thing, even if it costs you, which means, mm -hmm. yes, it might cost me a couple of clients this month because I'm not going to manipulate them. I'm just not going to do it. We're going to allow them to come to a place where they really know awareness wise, that this is what they want to do. They're ready to commit to something really special, something long-term. Thus the real mentor mentee relationship begins. And I think that when coaches realize that and they slow it down and they get back to the foundation and stop trying to wheel the fucking bow that's like 80 pounds heavier than they can actually shoot, you know, they're like, this bow, oh, I just learned this new tactic. I'm going to shoot this arrow 100 miles. And it like drops right below. Why didn't it work? It's like, hey, you're, not, you're not ready for it, clearly. Like, you aren't ready to actually do this. And if we put you on the spot, you're going to fold. So it's probably a good thing that you're not going that fast because then you're really going to have issues, right? That's how you get it over your head. And I've been there before too. And that's a rough place to be. Mm -hmm. So I think when we learn why we're doing what we're doing and we really believe that this is true to us because we have this vision of what we want to create in our lives for the world, right? Serve yourself, serve others, serve one world in that order. And we understand it's going to take some F and time. We can learn patience and we can learn to appreciate each moment. And when people talk, when the, 
entrepreneurs at the top of the game, they literally look down at every single day and say, I'm seeing too much of this high speed, high roller bullshit. We're not fucking putting in the work. We're expecting things to happen for us. We're quitting right away. We can start to realize it's going to take some time. We start to find appreciation in the actual journey that is life, right? And I think that we get confused because we, we consistently uh, want to create silos for everything. But like entrepreneurship and life are just the exact same thing. There's not a difference. Mm -hmm. It's just a different, a different actions we're taking uh, within the context of where we're spending our time. That's a subcategory of our life, right? Mm -hmm. It's our life. So we can start to blend the two and realize like, okay, as a coach, if I stop just focusing on doing the things that I'm seeing these other marketers that are working are doing, and I start to kind of cultivate my own strategies, my own methods and follow what's true to me. Yes, it takes longer. Yes, it is slower, but holy shit, it's going to last longer. And I promise you as an entrepreneur, the only thing that ever lasts is your ability to continue to get up every day and know why you're doing what you're doing. Because if you can do that, you will eventually get to where you want to be and you'll do it the right way and it'll last and you'll build something special and it'll be meaningful and you won't wake up at 60 and be like, damn, I feel like I fucked over so many people. Right. Yeah. Well, and I think there's this whole misconception too of, you know, being a coach and being a laptop warrior and living the life and DM five people and, you know, it's an entrepreneur. You must be oh, no. busier, 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 do oh, more, no. send email lists, do that, you know, post this, post that. Um, you know, I guess, what are your thoughts on the lack of the mind spirit connection? <laughs> I, all I'm going to say is, is do less, be more. Mm -hmm. And not yeah. like be more, achieve more, like be in be. your essence, be yeah, yeah. To, to explain that. Right. The more time that everybody says are, you do have, what the fuck does right. that mean, Graham? Right. So I think people <laughs> like to do more because it makes them, again, it's external validation. Oh, if I did yeah. like 10 tasks today, I feel good. Good job, Graham. You did those 10 things. Woo. Yeah. But if you be more, if you elevate your frequency and vibration to the person that you're trying to create, to that, the, that, 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 that person that is going to be the one that can run that big company that you dreamed of that person that can be the artist, right? That person that is going to be the astronaut or whatever it is that you choose to do. And you can get into that um, understanding of what that person actually is and how that person functions on a day-to-day -day basis. What you'll find is that when you just elevate yourself to that state of being by taking action on those things and having thoughts that are in alignment with that person and feelings that are in alignment with that person, you'll start to realize that you're a lot more present each and every moment. And the reason that this changed my life was because I realized one day that I, I thought that I was talking about service all the time, but I wasn't serving. I was constantly, I serve so much. I do so much. And then I thought, I really don't do that much. I'm not even really serving that much. I'm, I'm a crock of crap right now. Like, what do you mean, Graham? Like, just serve in front of you. Start with what's in front of your face. Start with serving yourself. Wake up. Do things that feel good to you. Does this be perfect? The morning routine thing is now, of course, the newest thing. Everyone's like, oh, how do I do it? How do I master my morning routine? And this is the funniest part. How do I map? This is the question. How do I master my morning routine? I'm just going to watch everyone else's and copy them. Right? <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. Why don't you do everyone else? Why don't you master everyone else's morning routine? That'll work. No, we need to learn to cultivate it for ourselves, right? Yes. Take things from other people and apply them and try new things. But when we start to take something as doctrine right away, let me end up in a place that is unfamiliar, but more importantly, one that isn't aligned with us. Right? If you don't like to journal, and you, but you like to go on a walk in the morning, but you think that you need to journal every day because walking is a waste of time, well, then guess what? You're going to end up being, on a, you're going to be misaligned and you're going to be upset about it. You're going to be irritated. You're going to be like, oh, this doesn't feel right. I, I'm, I'm, having, I'm having resistance. Well, no shit. You're not doing you. You got to do you, right? I always talk about this. There's a structure of the day and within that day, there is a flow, right? And in that flow, you can elevate yourself to that state of being and then things that come up and things that come in and things that are in your face, you can just be and the person that you need to be for those things at that moment. And so for me, what I found with service and being is that as a coach, I think this is really applicable. When I realized that everyone that I needed to serve was right in front of my face, either on this or in real life, wherever it was, I started just to do that. I started taking every conversation I had more seriously, realizing that I could help someone in every conversation in some way, whether it be a small word of encouragement or a question that they didn't want to ask themselves or just me smiling at them or waving at them or giving them the peace sign or giving them motivation when they're running up the hill, just screaming out my window, you got this, keep going, whatever it was. I realized that if I could just serve those people, it would bring me up to that vibration frequency all the time. And when I'm at that place all the time, guess what? You're attracting more of the good stuff that you want, right? 
That's how the law of attraction works, mm -hmm. right? Frequency and vibrations up. Now we become the magnet. And when you know your why, you're the compass, right? Yeah. And that's when crazy shit starts happening in your life. And you're like, this is kind of weird. I feel like I'm in a movie. Well, it's like you are, right? You're creating your own version of that. You're writing your own book, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So I think when we talk about doing versus being, we're talking about being busy and being productive, but we're not talking about being the getting into the flow of life and creativity. And, you know, something I've been thinking a lot about lately um, is this concept of the Tao from Taoism, which is like the great way, right? The energy flow of all things. And uh, the warrior think, way. Right. And I think <laughs> that, I think that the state of being is in more in alignment with that, which is just do that, which naturally arises. If you're a coach, and you are, and your coach, this is a perfect example. If you're a coach and you're marketing coach, again, there's a difference between teaching and telling. And I think there's a lot more telling going on than teaching. Because if I yeah. tell you what to do, Michelle, which is what I think a lot of people have done with you, you'll do it. But you're like, you know, it's like not, it's not, yes. it's not you're not satiated. But when I, when, when I teach, I'm able to work with you and we have a give and take. And then you're able to come to your own conclusions and be like, oh my gosh, that's why this didn't work. Or, oh my gosh, this is totally working. Or, oh my gosh, I want to do it more like this. Right? And that is what differentiates yourself. That is what helps you grow. That is what solidifies who you are. And that's what helps you elevate to your own personal state of being. And so I think the example that I wanted to give was like a marketing coach who tells someone to this new DM tactic of like DM like it's people a day and they're in the sauna uh, of their gym messaging people ravenously with, with like literally no context, which is basically the same thing as driving by someone and cat calling them. Like you don't know them and you're just screaming out the window and expecting them to want to like go on a date with you. <laughs> that literally makes no sense. Right. Again, I'm guilty of this in the past, but when I thought about it, I was like, that doesn't make any sense. But guess what? I, I learned it and thought that was the right way. And like, it's not right for me at least. Um, but you have 50 people you're messaging when the person across from you in the sauna is like upset clearly. And all they're looking for is a conversation. Mm -hmm. And it's being aware enough to know like, this isn't where I'm needed right now. Yeah. That person needs my help. And just being there, right? Being in person, being in the moment, enough to serve. And guess what? I can't tell you how many epic sauna conversations have turned into beautiful relationships. Just because I was willing to break the ice because I could tell this person wanted to have a conversation. They just didn't want to start it. That's cool. Start it. We're cool with it, right? Get out of my comfort zone. Talk to some people that I never met before. Say the things that I wouldn't have said. Slow down and have a conversation with someone you would never have thought to. Perfect example of this the other night. I just moved to Encinitas, California. I'm literally brand new. I uh, moved here like a week and a half ago. And the other night I was walking in this um, neighborhood um, trail the other night. And I was just walking and I... I think you know me at this point, Michelle. I literally wave and say hi to every single person, yep. like everyone, because why not? Why would I not? Like, it doesn't make any sense not to. There's another person across from me. I will acknowledge their existence because they are alive, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm walking around and I'm, I'm, and you know, I'm really chilling when I put my hands behind my back because then I'm like, re I'm just like, you know, bobbing my head. <laughs> <laughs> it's super funny. Like, I notice I do it sometimes. I'm like, all right, I'm really hanging out. So, what do I know? This, this old guy comes walking down the path the same way. And we both say hi to each other. And then uh, within a couple of seconds, we're having a conversation. And 45 minutes later, I learned about how this guy came to Hollywood and how he has worked on 80 different movies and is a, a cameraman for all the directors that I'm, I've been watching YouTube videos on. He's telling me all this behind the scenes information, telling me how for him to get the job and get into the camera guild in Hollywood, he had a, he, this is what his version of persistence was. Every Friday night, he would walk to the guy who gives these camera cards. You need, apparently, you need a camera card to get into the guild. And once you're in the guild, you're in the union. And then the like, directors will hire like entire teams. And that's how you be consistent in that regard business-wise. And he would go to this guy's office every Friday night for three years. For three fucking years. And just walk in and be like, hey, have a great weekend. And, he, and did I move up on the list yet? And just be friendly. And after three years, other studios caught wind that he was doing this and they, they, they increased his value and they called him and they hired him. And he told Amazing. me that for three years and I'm talking, and I've talked to people and they're quitting next three days. I'm like, yo, you guys <laughs> are weak. You need to elevate. This is embarrassing. Like, but he knew what he wanted to do. Right. And he was persistent about it. And I think like, I would never have had the opportunity to talk to that guy if I wasn't present in the moment. Like, if I had been too worried about messaging you, cause I was afraid I didn't do a good enough job. 
then I would have been on the phone messaging you. And this is the opportunity to talk to someone who I want to build a connection with. I want to build a relationship with and who I know appreciated my conversation and appreciated the fact that I had nowhere to go. He was shocked mm -hmm. that I had nowhere to go. He's like, oh, you have to leave? I'm like, no, I signed a lease, so I got me here for 12 months. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? That was my answer. Ah, I got 12 months, so we can talk. You know what I mean? Like being versus doing. If I'm too focused with the doing and the productivity, I lose the ability to be in the moment and have the creativity and the natural flow of things. You know, this guy is going to teach me a lesson that I didn't already know. And of course he did. He taught me all kinds of things in the hour. And I listened so carefully because he was such an interesting guy, had a great perspective, totally under, we were on the same wavelength with happiness and stillness and understanding that there's so much more to life, et cetera. And it was just a beautiful experience. So when we're talking about doing versus being, especially as a coach, it's bringing your awareness into the fucking reality that we live and not just living on online where, where we, we just, because we learned something or our, our, our idols are like strictly there doesn't mean that they are great coaches it just means that they're yeah. fucking epic marketers right they could be great coaches but it means that they're great marketers or they just got there first right the first guy that did the gold rush might not have been a good guy but you were you believed in him and bought from him anyway right right we need to bring more we need to think about these people think about these things and if you're going to get into coaching you need to think about why you're doing it because just doing it to make some side money is not a good reason. And I promise you, you will not last mm -hmm. out of business. And then you'll talk shit on coaching and everyone else about it. And you'll, because you're, you know, you didn't do it yourself. Et cetera. Yeah. Well, and that's always been part of the reason why I've always, I, I never wanted to be like a coach. Because <laughs> yeah. coaching has such a bad rap and people you just no would do it, people doing it with the wrong intention, but that, you know, them proceeding with the wrong intention was just really them not being aligned with their purpose and their why and being told wrong information. So they're executing it from what they're told, not from what they're taught and not being able to discover that for themselves in the way that they want to be able to present that to the world. So, which all of that, you know, was, was a lot of that was very profound from our early days of working together mm -hmm. as a coach. And so I guess two things for you is one, if you could tell people, you know, everybody that's listening or watching just regular people, not even coach, what would be one thing that they can do personal development wise that would make more of an immediate result or progress or growth in their life. Yeah, I got one. Spend 20 minutes every day without your phone or any device walking around and just observe life. Just be present for the walk. I know it's a challenge because you want to listen to music, but that's not walking. That's you listening to music and you're walking is the secondary thing you're doing, right? Make walking the primary Walking is the most, I think one of the most stress relieving, beautiful, mind opening and uh, profound personal development exercises that you can do. That's why everyone, every great thinker has done it because it helps you think. <laughs> mm. And if you can be present for that time, yes, you're getting exercise, which is fantastic. You're getting fresh air, which is amazing. You're kind of getting out into the world and experiencing what's right in front of your face and you get to see things as they are. You know, when you're not focused on your music and you're focused on being present, you become much more aware of the moment. You become aware enough to see this guy walking up to you that wants to talk to you. You meet a new friend, talk to someone new, and you have a good experience. I think walking is one of the most underrated personal development exercises. I don't think people view it as that because it's kind of ridiculous to say, but they do it wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I think they might do it wrong, right? They, they do it as fast as they can or they like do it because they have to or they like do it because there's nothing else, you know, they, they want to listen to the music or get out for a little bit. It's like, as soon as you put on the, the music and the headphones of the podcast, you lose sight of the beauty of which everything is created from. And that's where you derive your natural creativity. That's what brings you to the moment. That's what grounds you. So walking. I love I highly that. I recommend it. Love that. Now, second question. So simple. <laughs> but like, every time I do it, I learn, I, it's much more profound than I thought originally. Well, simple is usually better. We talk about this all the time. So. Yeah. My second question for those that are coaches, you know, whether health coach, fitness coach, relationship coach, I don't even care what kind of a coach that you are, that may be struggling that like they, you know, they have this gift, they really want to help people, but they're always just stuck. And maybe those marketing tactics just don't feel right, or they're not able to be consistent with them. What do you think is something that they should ask themselves to be able to help break through that besides getting on a call with you? <laughs> <laughs> um. What am I frustrated for? Mm -hmm. Like, why am I irritated? Why am I angry this isn't going faster? Why do I think it needs to go faster? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ask questions that apply to the direct feelings that you have. I think that 
if you're if you're if you're upset because you're not going faster, then the, there's something else going on behind the scenes. Something because because eventually you don't even need to in business. Everything that I'm seeing that I've seen, you get to a point where your culture is so strong and the things you do are so powerful and the moment and you've been doing it for so long consistently that the momentum carries itself. Other people come to support what you're creating and they want to be a part of it. And so naturally your, your clients are the first people that believe in your company, right? Mm -hmm. For employees, your clients are the ones that first work with you. They're like, you know, I believe in your vision. I want to work with you. Yeah. Right. So people buy why you do it, not what you do. Boom. So I think that if, if that's where you're at, you need to really reflect and maybe pull out your journal or maybe take a couple of days off from work and just really reflect on like, okay, why am I feeling this way? And where does this stem from? Like always go deeper to understand where this is coming from. Because I, one thing that I learned is that when a lot of us go through a phase where we have our initial awakening and we unlearn and we relearn and we're like, yeah, we got it. And then like somewhere in between that and our next stage of growth, we lose it all and we relearn, we, we start learning shit that actually isn't us anymore, right? Mm -hmm. We get all into it and we're like, yo, I have this business, it's going to be epic. And then we're like, okay, I'm not sure where to go next. I'm going to hire this marketing coach that I think is a business coach that's going to help me with personal development and he only helps with marketing. And so you down all these marketing tactics and you're like, yeah. And you're like, I don't feel good. This isn't working. What happened? Mm -hmm. I want to go faster. Why am I not going faster? I'm doing everything right. I'm so, but you, you become unconscious really quickly that like, yo, we just download all this shit that isn't really isn't for us. <laughs> Off more, all that shit, delete it from our hard drive. Now we need to relearn again. Thus the second yeah. stage of that growth really will kick into play. So I think when we can retrace our steps of how we got to where we're at, we can start to see the areas that aren't true to us and any area that isn't true to you and what you believe, you need to take a look at it. And if you're in a place where you're frustrated or irritated or you're stuck, et cetera, you need to go back to the vision of why you're doing what you're doing. You need to look at how you're doing it with your mission and what you're actually executing on versus not, which you should be, et cetera. And then the values that constitute your entity or your company and what, what you're not living by. Because mm -hmm. if you have certain values that you express to your clients, but you don't live by them, how the hell are you going to be a, a person of integrity? Like you're not. So how are they going to trust you? I, will, I mean, it's hard to, it's like, you know, I, I see where your, I see where your heart is, but you're leading with your ego. Yeah. I'm going to write that one down later. I think that's good. That's powerful. Well, and for those that are listening, um, for coaches that are in, that are, like I said, that are in the coaching space, um, I, I, without a shadow of a doubt, I can say the very first call that I had with you, you know, almost six months ago when I was looking into growing six myself, oh my goodness. was well, the first call where I'd never been sold anything. You had already knew everything that was like out of alignment, out of integrity, what didn't drive with me, what things I needed that were able to help me propel myself in my life personally, thus be able to continue to grow um, professionally into my business. And so if you are a coach that are listening today, please feel free, reach out to Graham, schedule a call with him. He is offering uh, free calls. So, um, you know, I wasn't gonna do it as a, as a giveaway and just, you know, have somebody win, but I think it's highly, you know, as a coach and, you know, wanting to make the biggest impact into the world. Um, yeah. And thus you said, you know, like change ourselves, that's changing the world. I think it's, you know, it's a great opportunity for anybody that's out there that's looking for a mentor, looking for a coach to up level their coaching, to be a more powerful um, leader, jump on the call. So I will, I'll post all of Graham's information um, down below so you can contact him and reach out to him. Um, you know, even if it is just one discovery call to really figure out, you know, what you're unaligned with. Um, the, like I said, my first call led to two other calls led to the program because it was one of the most profound and most influential phone calls that I've had. And I've had some pretty powerful calls with some pretty powerful people. So don't miss out. Um, you know, there's a lot to be said with the mind, body, spirit connection, and it's missing in people. It's missing in coaches. And if it's missing in coaches, how can we teach it to others so that they can elevate themselves? Um, yeah. Just all, all of that, all of this today has just been absolutely fantastic. So I'm super grateful they were able to <laughs> dive into all of this. Third time um, is a charm, dude. Yeah, third it. time is a charm. So again, um, you know, pillars of growth, leaders into legends. Leaders into legends is the co coaching program for coaches to, you know, up elevate and up level their skills and themselves to thus, you know, better empower the others around you. So again, if you are a coach you know, reach out to Graham, hop on a call, chat, message him. I don't care what you guys do. Um, however, that connection works. Just take that opportunity because the opportunity literally is in your face right now or in your ear if you're listening onto the podcast. So maybe this is the time um, to figure out how to actually move forward with yourself and therefore professionally as well. So 
Thank you again, Graham. It's um, been welcome. amazing. Uh, again, founder of Pillars of Growth, MBS Mind Body Spirit Program, and Leaders into Legends. Um, just again, thank you for your time and all of your wisdom and your insight. And looking forward to having you on the show again soon. Hundred percent, Michelle. Right. Much love to you. Be good. Peace. Be safe. Use your gifts, serve one more, and let them find a way to be out here. What? <laughs> <laughs>